Stoners, welcome to the Highly Creative. In this episode, we are having a chat with Arthur's thesis. So please welcome Nick and Jake. My name is Balazs. So hi guys. Let's start with a warm-up question, uh, which is: Please introduce your band in a single sentence. Uh, we are Arsis Thesis, and we are a two-piece doom prog outfit that creates a chaotic wall of sound. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> cool. I I especially like the chaotic wall of sound, and that, that perfectly, perfectly fits, fits your music, music that <laughs> description. <laughs> So you mentioned you're a two-piece band, and I, I want to ask you uh, about your experience. What the advantages and drawbacks of being a two-piece band are? You know, I still have uh, two-piece bands uh, in the underground nowadays, so it's a tendency, and people are choosing this for a reason, I guess. Uh, what's your uh, background and what's your experience with this? Well, me and Jake are actually brothers, and we played in bands together before, um, and how we came upon uh, doing the two-piece thing is we were in a three-piece prog rock band uh, before this and we had changed out a bunch of other members and it just seemed like nobody had like a wavelength uh, when they're playing like me and Jake did so we just thought that's that around the same time we both started getting into doom and fuzz music and stuff like that so we ju both just thought well, why don't we just try to do this a little bit more simplified and with two of us and I think it worked out really well it's uh the advantages of being a two-piece are I think it brings out a lot of creativity that you don't have to search for when you're in a three-piece band because um, there's a lot of formulas you have to just throw out because you can't do them as a two-piece band so you have to come out, come up with new sounds, new textures, new song structures that fit the two-piece setting while still uh, making it viable to the listener. Um, so when we started the two-piece thing, I was just like, man, I like sleep, you like sleep, we like <laughs> Electric Wizard, and we do all this uh, prog stuff. Why don't we just try and like fuse the two and just do it just you and me? And uh, that was such an adventure trying to get, especially the guitar tone to fit just a two piece setting. Mm -hmm. And I think it opens it up for you more. Yeah. You definitely have to, being a drummer in a two piece band, you definitely have to do things to try to fill up the sound more rather than if you were in a three, four, three plus piece band. Um, it definitely was something like a learning curve at first for me to learn, but I think now that we got it, I think we're doing it pretty yeah, well. He has more room to breathe, more room to experiment on the drum set as yeah, well. So, yeah. yeah, it's fun, and I'm glad we decided to do it that way. <laughs> yes, and you're doing great. Yes, yeah, so I listened to your EP called Pangea, which was released in April. Mm -hmm. And the next question is about this particular EP. So. If you meet someone who doesn't know you and they ask you to recommend a song from this EP, which one would you recommend and why? Oh, uh, you want to go first? I usually tell, I would just tell them Pangea, bro. Like the second song on the album, um, it's a title track. It just hits you right in the face right away. It just kind of gives our, I think that's a good, for me personally, I think that's a good like statement song to really understand what we're trying to do. Mainly, I think that song is a really I like Pangea too. I think if I think it depends on the person. True. If it was a uh, someone who's like more familiar with heavier music, I would probably recommend Pangea. Um, if not, I would probably go for Snow, the last track on the album. I think that one has the most hooks and it's the most traditional, hard hitting, just like stoner doom jam. And I think that's just a really accessible track. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, my favorite is Pangea, and I really like the intro because it's, it's something I mentioned chaotic and it's mystical and beautiful, and it comes with a bulldozer of sound afterwards. Um, and I would like to ask you about what this song means. What what is the message? So it has these lines, and I wrote it in my notes <laughs> uh, to quote. So, I hear Pangea's dividing, it's splitting at its core. 
The people are eating people. They are fighting for control. So what is the message of this? So Jake actually wrote all the lyrics. <laughs> Jake, so we, for vocals, we actually switch off. And uh, Jake sings all the vocals for that. So he wrote all the lyrics. So I'll let him take that. Well, when I, when I wrote those lyrics, I was really thinking about, um, you're from, where are you from again? You're from Hungary, right? So, yes. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're uh, we're from the U.S. and currently things are not going the way I would personally enjoy. And I just think with all that going on, it kind of motivated me to write something. And people are just there's just a lot of selfishness going on around our area. At least it feels like to me. So I was just really motivated by that. And. I don't know, just a lot of people against each other, and it was just, I don't know, that was really just the motivation, just, just people splitting off rather than connecting to create a, you know, to have a mutual goal, you know what I'm saying? We all live together, but I don't know, that's basically, I was just, it was just a lot of frustration, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, coming out of, coming out of those lyrics, a lot of, I think um, the first time he showed me because that song originally had very, very little lyrics on it. It was almost a, just an instrumental track. So we were like, I think this song needs more lyrics. And it was all recorded and ready to go. And I was like, why don't you just try and put some more lyrics over different parts of it? And then the first time I heard it, I was like, wow. <laughs> that's such a, such a, like, very visceral message. And I think um, when he explained it to me, the, the uh, juxtaposition between uh, just all the hatred and different like groups against each other here in our part of the world against the Pangea actually splitting up <laughs> uh, was just such a cool message and the people are eating people that's just like such a <laughs> pounding line so yeah. I think that song came out really good lyrically I'm glad we added the other lyrics over it yeah for sure yeah, I, I agree. The, the lyrics are great and it means something similar to me as well. And that brings us to the next question, which is, as an artist, what do you think? Uh, should you express your opinions in other topics outside music? So outside playing the songs and writing the lyrics, you know, in social media or in interviews about global politics and, and such topics. Should, should an artist do that or should they not? Too, I think, um, personally, I think music has always, always been about politics. It's always been about politics and daily, everyday life. You can go all the way back to uh, Beethoven writing symphonies about Napoleon. And it's always been intertwined. In today, I think in today's day and age, there's a limit, um, especially for up and coming bands, you can only express your opinion so much without alienating people. And so bands on our level, I personally, when we're at a level that we're at, would not go out and start voicing my political beliefs at, on my social media for our band. Um, not that I would say everyone shouldn't, but, um, if I got to a level where or if we got to a level where our voice could make a difference and yeah. our music could make a difference and bring awareness to things we care about, then I would definitely do that. Um, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with artists voicing their opinions on things like that. Yeah, for sure. Cool, cool. cool. I definitely, definitely agree with that. that. So, so, I have one more song to ask about, which is Terence Fletcher. <laughs> Tell me, tell me something about this song. Is it a reference to the movie Whiplash and the one of the main characters, Fletcher, who is a guy who puts pressure on a poor drummer guy at a level of the unbearable pressure, psychological, almost terror. So is it about that one or something more? Yeah, so, so Terrence Fletcher was a good, that's the second song we ever wrote, I think? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the second song we ever wrote, and it was, um, lyrically, it's, it's just about a person who manipulates and tries to maintain control over someone else. 
And I think that's that's what the main lyrics of the song and that verse in the middle that Jake screams is about uh, kind of rebelling against that person that's trying to manipulate you. So I thought Terrence Fletcher was a great figure from that movie to just, uh, you know, encompass that. And uh, I had just seen the movie and I was, we were looking for a name for the song and I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah. Especially if you, if you, this is kind of not, we weren't really thinking about this when we wrote it, but I think it's funny how fast Jake has to play during the verse <laughs> uh, compared with, Ter with the Terrence Fletcher and Whiplash. Um, Cause he's like 180 beats per minute, like, riding on the <laughs> ride and it's it's just cool so yeah that, that was a that was a cool inspiration i really i really like that track he's trying to play this song. <laughs> faster <laughs> great so are you inspired by other movies and as well and other than movies what else that inspires you um well i'll go first uh i uh, Snow is actually slightly based off of Game of Thrones as well, as it's uh, <laughs> talking about uh, uh, assault begins on the wall, so like the Great Wall in Game of Thrones. Um, so I get a lot of inspiration from that. I'm a big sci-fi medieval, uh, I play a lot of video games. Video games, as far as story arcs, um, I always try to consume as much content because for me lyrics don't really come out unless I have some sort of like crazy stories in my head so I try to consume as much tv or movies that I like or video games to have some sort of you know lyrical content when I'm writing my songs and I, and I feel like that's awesome because even if you're taking from stories and other things you like uh, those lyrics can be interpreted by mm -hmm. the listener in a million different mm -hmm. ways so it's just a good way for me. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, yeah, I think he's more influenced by movies, but I like video games as well. But I think when it comes to uh, like instrumentals and stuff, like me personally playing the drums, I think I try to take influences from other music genres besides just you know metal, doom, fuzz, and try to incorporate it into our music. And when it comes to lyrics, I think I try to really just really take from personal experience just things I've really experienced in real life and try to uh, uh, transform them in a way that will make sense over the over the song um, but yeah definitely definitely other media outlets I think video games are more of an influence in me than than movies because I don't watch as many movies but yeah for sure for sure cool so now that you have your first EP what's the next step in your life <laughs> so we're, we're playing a bunch of shows right now um we have plans to start our next project this summer um and uh we are trying to branch out we're playing a lot of shows in texas um with a lot of bands and we're playing uh uh we're writing a bunch of new stuff and we're planning to get it hopefully recorded this summer and hopefully released early next year have a second one a follow-up and uh, got some new merch on the way and all sorts of cool stuff, so. <laughs> Great. So it seems we are running out of time soon. So before we finish, could you send a message to the viewers? I just want to say everyone who's listened to the EP, bought a piece of merch, everyone who's uh, even just sent us a message, who's commented, liked the post on our social media, who's done anything, at all thank you so much we love you uh we're trying our best and we couldn't do it without you um so thank you so much hey man thank same you. man bump that arch's thesis you did <laughs> everywhere all <laughs> streaming services <laughs> thanks okay. so thanks for watching check out arch's thesis i will put links in the video comments so listen to these guys because they are highly creative.